It's a very interesting game in Phoenix. I don't say that very often, but without DeAndre Ayton. You haven't said that since Steve Nash was no. there. No. Without DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker had 30 points, and the Suns upset the visiting Clippers. It's a great game. What do you think about the Suns' performance? I have two words for the Suns' performance. Monty Williams. Mm. See, this is what happens when you get a coach that is nurturing a culture of young players and is teaching them good habits so very constant that it's when it pays off, it pays off in unexpected ways. When we saw the Clippers play their first couple of games, people was talking oh, about champions. them like they're the 70, champions. 70 win bulls. Champions. Right. And they're going to add Paul George. Will they go undefeated? And, and this is the beauty about the league also. I'm pretty sure Doc Rivers actually just loved that they lost to them versus losing to the Lakers. Because this allows you to go back to the drawing board and figure out what you still need to do better. But for Phoenix, this is all about Devin Booker. Here's a player that they drafted, show amazing promise, all-star mm -hmm. level player just because he's in Phoenix, scored 70 points in the game, re-signed. Yep. DeAndre Ayton, this is supposed to be a big year for him. Suspended for 25 games. 25 games. So now that's the character point. This is the character point. Now what happens for the rest of the year? We're going to go out and be competitive and beat the Clippers. So now when you do that, you continue to build, have building blocks that young players are excited to be a part of. And it's got to feel good to get this win early in the season because you know when you put your shoes on, you can beat any team in the NBA. Oh, the Clippers are supposedly the best team in the NBA. Guess what? We handled business on our own, in our own house. There's and, always a reason to play. And another young team that shows promise in the Kings, we also beat them. Beat them too. And everyone's putting them in the eighth spot in the Western Conference. Like, you know what? I don't think they're going to win the championship, but the Suns have shown some promise early on in the season. And, of course, I always love what Devin Booker can do. The Knicks and the whole league for ESPN, and we... Right. Just happened to have a great game from the Nets last night against the Grizzlies. John Morant had a bit of a coming out party. Hello, hello. He was going back and forth Zing. against Kyrie Irving all night long. And then there was this play to force overtime. And then this play to end the game. He drops the ball for Jay Crowder for the win. Boom. Malika, was this a John Morant coming out party that we just witnessed? Yes, absolutely. I mean, you just saw... John Morant go up against an elite point guard mm -hmm. in this league and hold his own. That doesn't happen for every rookie. And the other thing is, it wasn't all through scoring. Like we just saw, he dished the ball out, and that's what's important because the other night we saw Kyrie Irving drop 50 points. They still lost. He had 25 points at halftime, Kyrie did. He only had three assists. And so the fact that it was a well-rounded game by John, not just like an offensive, I'm gonna put it up every single time, that's big time. That's, that's yeah. big time. Here's one of the things that Kyrie is going to have to fight. As a volume primary ball handler, took 27 shots, did have 37. Not necessarily a great defender, did give up 30. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there may be an issue at some point if his percentages aren't effective that all of a sudden is stymieing the growth of the players around him? Mm. Absolutely. And I mean, that that's what they're working on at this point. At this point, it's about assimilating Kyrie Irving into the lineup because last year, this was a basketball team that was was starless. And so they had to share the load. They had to share that weight. And so uh, we asked a, a bunch of the guys the other day, was there a tendency to step back and to just say, wow, look at what Kyrie is doing as opposed to kind of be in it. And that's something that on both sides, they're gonna have to fight. The guys like Spencer Dinwiddie are gonna have to uh, worry about getting in the game and not just sitting back and watching. And Kyrie is also going to have to worry about getting those guys involved because as we saw they play their best when other guys are scoring too what would you think would be realistic expectations for these nets just sort of like realistically like a you know what sort of seed do you think they could end up in the east i mean i think they're going to end up probably about where they were last year they finished what they were six seed last year yeah, 42 or 40. yeah they're going to be around yeah. the five six and Part of that's because the top of the East also looks a little bit different. It's not just that the Nets are going to be pretty good. They'll be decent. But also you don't have some of those same teams potentially finishing where they did last year. So I think I think five seed, six, five that's seeds fair. is where we're looking. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, highlights, and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.